All right, is everyone familiar with indexing? All right, let's head on to the next thing. Oh, so this is the index error exception. So this is what happens when you call the index outside the, the range of the string. So if you have seven elements in your string or your list or your dictionary and you call the 10th item, you get this error. Make sense? List index out of order or index error is just your number is screwed up. So if you, so when you get this error and you're not 100% sure where it's, why it's going wrong, start printing the values, start printing your indexes and you'll see that, oh, this index, for whatever reason, I multiplied instead of adding and I'm getting 60 instead of six. That's why. So print, when you're running into issues, feel free to print, you know, print, what number is CH right now? I'm not, I can't remember. They type in 23. Oh. Okay, so now I know that my index is three, CH is three, so okay, so that's gonna work. So don't be afraid to throw as many prints in there as possible, because it doesn't mess with your code at all. It just tells you what things equal. Tracking with me? All right, let's head back to the PowerPoint. The length function, so we kind of went over this with lists, but it's the same thing with strings. I'm just gonna comment all that out. So if I have my city equals Boston, size is the length of city, print, ah, size, what's size gonna equal, Johnny? Six. Six, let's see. Molto bene. Boy, it's a wicked smile. Like how one person got that? Maybe. But anyway. Uh, good Will Hunting. My boy's yeah, wicked smart. I'm sorry. We already talked about Good Will Hunting in this movie. Oh, I recommend good will that will. everybody should watch it. But what? As a weekend candy teacher, you cannot recommend it. Yeah, I am recording right now, so. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, no rush. <laughs> anyway, yes, Connor. Sorry, this is kind of irrelevant, but how do you um, comment everything out again? So you just highlight it, yeah. hold Alt and tap three, and it adds, or it takes, four takes away. Okay, thank you. Yep, so yeah, so size is just, oh. it's how many elements are in that string. It could be symbols, it could be spaces, basically anything in between the two uh, apostrophes, or quotation marks. Oh, makes sense, Johnny. So, uh, for if you do it for an actual list, will it give you the number of elements in the list, or will it'll give? Yeah. So let's say we'll make this into a list real quick. So now this is a list, and instead of giving me six, it's going to give me one because I only have one element in this list. Any questions on size? No? Okay, or length? Connor? Nope. All right. For loop, so again, a lot of the stuff you can do with a list, you can do with a string. So you can index, you can use a for loop to go through, you can use a while loop to go through, you can search it, all that stuff. So we're, this is going to be a little bit of a review. So I can use a for loop to go through a, a string and I can also use the length function to prevent it from going any further than it needs to. Um, so this is city is Boston index, index is zero, while index is less than the length of city, print city, index, index plus equal one. So what this happens, Boston. You can also do this, um, 
you can do for ch in city print ch. It's the same, you get the same result. It's just depending on what you're trying to do with the code, what the problem is asking you to do, that will dictate whether or not you use a while loop or a for loop or just how you write it in general. Tracking with me? All right, I'll, I'll give you guys just a sec to catch up with this. Nikki. Uh, what is plus equal one? Plus equal one is the accumulator operation. So it's like I'm adding money to your wallet. It's just the shortcut instead of doing index index, index equals index plus one. It's just index plus equal one. You can do the same thing with minus equal one times equal one. Um, but yeah, index plus equal one is add one to it each time. Is that what you would have to do? Like how it would have to look to make it print like that? Um, one of these two, either the while loop or the for loop. Oh, it's either or. Okay. Yeah, both of them achieve the exact same thing. I'm just showing you two different ways to go through it. Because depending on what you're doing, again, you may need um, to do different things. So why is the for loop good? Why? Yeah. So what it's saying is I want, so for ch in city, this is a, it's called iterable, so I can actually go through it. Um, it's not a variable. It's it's a, something you can go through, right? That's what iterable means, I can loop through it. Uh, so because this is iterable, I'm saying for every individual item in this thing, print the individual item. The individual item is gonna be each individual letter while the whole thing is just the string. Okay, all right, back to the PowerPoint. String concatenation, this is the same thing with lists. We can go. Um, what exactly is that last code supposed to do? Because for mine it just spelled Boston, but one letter at a time. Yeah, that's all it was supposed to do. Okay. I mean, it spelled it twice. Yeah, or, yeah. It was supposed to do this, right? This is what it did? Mine did it twice, though. Did you have the for loop inside of the while loop? Uh, city equals Boston, index equals zero, while index. So one city. Print city index, index plus equal one, space. This uh, for loop is not inside the while loop. No, mine's not inside. Mm. For ch in city, print c. That, that would print it twice, though, wouldn't it? If yeah. The way you have it, yeah. Yeah, it does print it twice. Yours only printed it once, though. Because I did it differently. Yeah, but, mm. Because I wrote this part. Yeah. Oh, I see, I see. I see. Ran it, yeah. added this part, and then ran it. Got or it. commented that out. So, okay. So, all three. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, string concatenation, this is the same thing. So, message is, I can go, hello, plus... world print message and I'm gonna get hello world I can also go if I want this to be X is hello Y is space world Z is X plus Y print Z we're gonna get you can do that as well. So this is similar to what we were doing earlier. Um, remember that uh, assignment when you would, in which you had to add the employees' names together? Yeah. It's similar to that. Right, you can add strings together, uh, and that's what that assignment was um, a while ago. So for a list, you can go back and rename it, right? You can change what the first element is in a list, right? Right, Storm? Do you remember how to do that? I'm changing elements in a list? Yeah. 
that's not good. So if I have names is Zach, Johnny, Storm, you can go names zero is because I'm not a student, we're going to change it to Nikki. We're going to print names and then so we should get so first time is Zach second time it becomes Nikki so I can rewrite values in a list however I cannot change print names I cannot change um, to Jack I cannot go back and rewrite and change a string the error is called a type error and it says string object does not support item assignment meaning I can't change it what I can do is I can go names is Jack print names but I cannot do that so we'll get Zach Zach Jack because in this line I'm re I'm recreating I'm changing what names actually is I'm not editing what it already is that verbiage can be a little confusing does that make sense it's like basically I can't repair this car I have to buy a new car or your computer's broken we can't physically fix this one part of it you just have to buy a brand new computer Right, strings just, just you just can't change them. Doesn't work. The PowerPoint string slicing again. This is very similar to list slicing, so we're not going to spend too much time in this. Um, you just have the sh the name of the string you have to start with, and then the starting and the end. So I'm going to copy full name Patty Lynn Smith. The middle name is the full full name six comma ten. Print just Lynn. What I can also do is if I can have my alphabet print letters 0 to 26 every second one so I'm gonna get Lynn and then a C E J G G I K M O Q S U W Y. That's really weird. Just instead of A B C D E A C E G I K M O Q S U W. You want to know a fun fact? Sorry. Someone just decided alphabetical order was going to be the alphabetical, the alphabetical order. Who was it? No idea. But like A, who decided that A was going to be the first letter? Who decided that B was going to be the Jesus, second letter? Did, did you ever realize that the brain named itself brain? Yes, brain is the, the human brain is the only thing in the universe that named itself. Well, more importantly, this is what we've been talking about. Look at the word world right now and tell me it doesn't look wrong. World? Yeah. Like, just type just look at it longer. Just, just type in world. Look, look at it for longer. See world. It's because there's a space in front of it. World. Say any word too many times and it starts sounding like nothing. That's true. Most time. All right, this one is. Which, yeah, it's weird. Language is crazy. Why do we bother with it? Why do we bother with language? Yeah, it's not important. Oh, okay.
Because colleges do. Because you can't get college. No, we've had this discussion. Python does not count as a language. We had this discussion literally yesterday. Get it together. Come on. But I don't want to take another language. Take Chinese. Chinese. Nick, okay, so. Uh, Chinese, wait, can you take one year Chinese and one year Spanish? <laughs> can you? No. <laughs> well, you can, except they don't recommend it because most colleges require it's two years of the same language. English or Foreign language. Uh, take Chinese, colleges will worship you for it. I just like Spanish They're, for four or five years. All right, all right. No, all right, guys. No, they don't care. Do it. I'm losing you. I'm losing you. I'm going to start whistling. Take two years, so that'd be Shh. So you can search strings with with you can search a string for a specific substring. Um, so this is my text four score and seven years ago. I want to check if the word seven is in the text. I print. I really don't want to type all that out. <laughs> Copy. What's so funny, Connor? Memes. Memes is me. Is it right now really a good time to be doing memes? It's not actual memes. I'm not live memeing. Meme. You know it's being meme. recorded, right? Yes. I'm just accepting it back. Do you guys have the PowerPoint open right now? All right, because that will help, because I'm copying and pasting most of the code. Oh, I'm writing it down right yes. It's taking I, so I'm long time. Long 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 I've been writing four score in seven years. So, so I'm just desperately trying to keep up. Yeah. What did you, why did you delete? Control Z, Control Z. All right, so I can search if seven is in the text. So then I do F, oh, F5, the string seven was found. If I do even, the string seven technically it should be even. It's if it at all is in there. Um, I could type in just the letter R. The string seven was found. So this is how you could count how many times. So for um, for Connor's password for West Point, I think you have to have three uppercase and four lowercase and three symbols and a, a couple things. This is how you could check. You would look in the string for a capitalized letter. And if you find found it, awesome, you move on to the next thing. If you don't find it, then you print, you don't have it. Is this sort of what the find function on a computer does? And actually in the beginning of one of the first things we learn in advanced programming is writing the code to search a text for what you want. Oh, for any sort of like so I want to find every phone number in this in this ten page document. You don't have to go, you just type in some code uh, and you find anything that matches a certain format. So it's pretty cool. Um, do you just have the same line written there twice, the string seven? Oh, it's was not, not found and was sorry. found. Sorry, I didn't see the all. No, you're good. Can you like move to the right a little bit? Oh wait, hang on, no, I forgot I should have done it this way. Day, nada, and then. Chinese. Yeah, no, that's not gonna work. Um, all right. So then we're gonna move on to Pierre. Okay, so we we just did that. The rep repetition operator again. This is similar with lists, Connor. Or Trevor, um, I can have my string. If I just want a blank string of five W or a string with five W's, I don't have to type in W W W W W five times. All you have to do is you know, string is W times five. Oh, 
It might be, but this is just stuff like knowing all of this sort of stuff will just help with general. You'll sit there and go, I'm not 100% sure if I know how to do this. Is it possible? Instead of trying to find Google and Googling it for five minutes, you go, yes, I know it's something like this. I know it's a repetition operator. So you, it just makes searching for stuff a lot faster and a lot easier if you know that it's possible. Yeah. So that's why we're kind of going through everything kind of quickly. Um, I'll make sure you guys know and practice on the really common stuff, not necessarily the repetition operator because it's not used too, too often. But you do need to know it. Uh, we'll do Masa, Nikki, and then Johnny. Wait, so after this week and then next week, the week after that, we start our final No. So you have this week with lists or strings. Next week, maybe mid-next week, we start with dictionaries, depending on how well you guys are picking up the strings. Um, and then we have about two weeks where we build a video game in class together. Oh. So you guys don't just start building a video game from scratch. We build one together and you guys kind of see how a video game has to work. Okay. And then I let you guys free to work oh, on your own I, game. I, I just let us like run random. I was like, how am I supposed to do this? No, I walk you through it. I, I built like a mini game for Homework 6. For what? For Homework 6. I built like a little mini battle game. Ooh, I can't wait to play it. Nice. Um... Splitting a string. This is useful. Oh, Nikki, sorry. Uh, what is a breakpoint? Like, if you right click your code, it says set breakpoint or clear breakpoint. Is that good? Uh, it's just where the code stops. So it doesn't shrink the string? I don't think so. Okay, no, apparently I was wrong. This is the last time I'm answering that question for the rest of the year because I've answered it so many. Highlight what you want, Alt-3 comments it out, Alt-4 uncomments it out. And I'm not answering that question again. Breakpoint. I don't know, I've never actually used that, so I'm not 100% sure, Nikki. Doesn't do anything, not that I know of. Johnny. Uh, Johnny, how do you do it so that each W will print on its own line, or can you? You can't. You, uh, Next or is it like you? Or is it like much more complicated? Um. This splitting a string is very, 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 very useful and common. What is splitting, now it's different from splicing. Splicing takes a section of the string and displays it, whereas splitting goes through. Okay, so splicing. So this is my string, right? Hello world. I want to splice it. Y is X. I tell it I want to start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I want to start at 3 and I want to go to 9. So this will then print. Oh no, 3. So hello space W O R. Right? So that's what it will display, right? What splitting a string does is I want to go through this and every time I have a space, split it up into a list. Whoa. So at every instance of a space, this will get transformed into a list and it will become, hello, world in a list format. So when you type to split it? What? What was the command to split? Split. So the way it works is if I have copy, so my lit, my string is one, two, three, four, and I want to my string dot split. Uh, I can't. Do I have to hit print? I think so. Yeah. So we're gonna do my underscore list now equals, 
And then we're going to print my underscore list. One, two, three, four. So now I have a, sh I have a list based on the string. So this is useful for if, please enter your first, middle, and last name. Zachary, you know, James Stolter. Split it up, and then I can go, your first name is this, your, third, your middle name is this, and your last name is this. And it helps, and you can just break stuff, strings up, and manipulate them more. Johnny. Do you need those parentheses after the split? Or yes, you do. The, you do need the parentheses after the split, because what this does is by default, if nothing is in there, it splits it by space. If you put uh, an O in there, it will split it up every time it finds an O. You notice there is no O anymore in any of these. So it found it found uh, the one the O here, got rid of it, and now N E two W is one element. Then you have a space until the F, and then I have U R. Make sense? What's wrong with your surface? Keyboard's not working. Keyboard's not working. Unplug the one by the computer and plug it in. You have a USB on there. I don't want you just sitting there. Trevor Moss, it doesn't look like you guys are typing anything. What are you guys watching? I'm trying to figure out. We're not watching anything. Okay. What's your question then? No question. No question? Okay. Introspective question for the soul. Okay. So this is, like I said, it's really important, and you can once we in. I don't know who who here taking is taking advanced programming next semester. I did, but I like my schedule, and I had to take two history courses next semester. Ooh, lucky! All right, so just Connor. Trevor's taking it too. I'm not thinking you should take it. I'm gonna try to only work to do half day at school because I don't really need anything more to graduate. Ooh, and then I'm gonna need a job. All right, that. Nick. If we want to take it, you can ask for it. Senior. Can you ask for it? Yeah. You'd have to talk to student services, but it's not. It's going to be offered more than just next year. So if you miss next semester, it should be offered at least once a year, I think. Yeah, it'll probably be a once a year class. It's half. It's a semester long course. Nikki. Sure. Uh, so is it true that if you show Scooby's your student ID, you get free hot dogs? No, that was the biggest lie of last year. I have, n I had no all idea. All of the Wheaton Academy administration lies. That was the biggest. Uh, what is the point of it, though? I thought that was like only a one day thing. I don't even know, but one day that they like announced it, yeah, I did. everyone went, and then they came back, and they were just like, he was like, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Lies. I don't know. I wasn't there for that. So, but this, so this split guys is really important with advanced programming we'll actually split things up we'll read basically excel files and you can split up so in college i had a project where they gave us an excel spreadsheet with like a thousand earthquakes a date on a thousand different earthquakes it was location time magnitude casualties all that stuff and i had to write a program that sifted through all of those a thousand lines and and take out okay so Japan had the most, uh, San Juan, I don't know, no, not San Juan. This other place had the highest magnitude, this other place had the lowest magnitude. The combined death toll for all of the earthquakes in Japan were this. Um, and one of the ways you did that is you split up the lines in the Excel file by tabs. So every time there was a tab, so each individual cell is in code separated by a tab, backslash T. It's the code to read it. Yeah, yeah, but you, because you can create cells that just calculate the code from the other cells. So couldn't you just say if column A is Japan, add deaths, right? Yeah. 
But there was a bunch that like, but in order to do that, you have to read the file correctly. So you have to open the file, and then also you had to save all that stuff to a secondary file. So it was a project on opening and closing files. So the actual code to go through Excel wasn't that hard. That's okay. not what they were, were asking about. Yeah. They were want, wanting to make sure you could open and close files correctly. Gotcha. I was going to say, I was like, that's a pretty it's, simple It is. Code. It is. And opening and closing files is in your book. Uh, we just don't cover it in this class. But if you guys want to read about it and do it yourself, that's totally fine. That may so for your video game, you could actually do that as a, as one of your features. Is a you have a high scoreboard that just saves the, whoever got the high score. Johnny, um, whenever I'm like, this is kind of the, another random programming question. Um, whenever I'm working on the homework and then I go into the um, what is it where you can only type but you can't save the stuff? That is the shell. The shell. Whenever I type like the function into the shell that I've typed in the console, it'll run the function. Can you do that if you don't have the um, a certain file open? Like you would just call one up from another file if it's in your files, or do you have to call the actual? So file up? You, you can, but you have to save it in a certain place. Like import random, you could save where you save random, and then import that. You can. It's just uh, we don't go over that class that in this class. But yeah, you can. Also, um, Gentlemen, so the, one are so four are loops. No, I mean like the like the things that it's coded for you. So that you oh, can oh, code it methods. The They're built in methods. So we build our own methods. Is that a thing we can do? It'd be a mod. You would build. You would build a module and have a function in a module. You wouldn't build a method. But the, it's basically the same thing. A built-in method is the is a function that's used without importing anything. Would it work the same way? Like you you'd have. It'd be like import Johnny's code. Johnny's code dot method or blank or whatever. But yeah, more, you can basically. Um, all right, so. Split, are you guys understanding that it splits based on whatever is in here within the parentheses? If nothing is in the parentheses, it defaults to spaces. And then it bill it creates a list out of that string. Yep. So this is now testing string methods. This is again starting to get back to password requirements. Um, I want to test and see if it contains a digit, right? If it only contains a digit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have my string. <laughs> Copy this down, I only have you for three more minutes. So we're gonna go string is 1200. Storm, are you still not able to get it to work? Yeah. No, what I'm saying is take the keyboard from that computer you're sitting at and plug it into your Surface. Oh, I can have it just in. No, 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 plug it into your Surface and then just use that keyboard. Yes, Storm, that is a smart move. And then, being the IT guy during sixth hour, if you want me to take a look at it, I will. All right, so string is 1200. Now I'm gonna type in if string dot is digit. Open, close parenthesis. Print string contains only digit. Else. Print string uh, contains characters other than digits. So then when I run it, we're going to see 1200 contains only digits. If I change this to A, 1200, I'm going to get A1200 contains characters other than digits. Um, uh, Paul, Ryan, I'm, I kid you not, that Paul Ryan thing, like I know your name is Ryan. Mm. What? Just both, they're both Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan, the actor, the congressman. No, you're talking about Paul Rudd. 
No, Paul Ryan. I, I met Paul Ryan, but I couldn't remember. Oh. I knew Paul Ryan was famous, but I couldn't make the connection. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I just started calling them Paul Ryan. All right. Instead of checking the house, it's like all digits. How you check to see if a digit is in there? If an individual. If like a digit in the list, just without coming up. You could do well. You could do that two ways. So you could say if it contains at least one digit, you would do if string if not string is digit. So if it contains digits and and letters, else contains only digits. That should be right. Contains only letters, digits, and letters. So you would say if it's not just digits, it's something else. But we also have there's actually a list of these in the in here. So this is another one we just did that. These are all the testing methods you can do. So you can you can have. Oh, all right. So we're gonna start with this on Thursday. Um, you guys may want to get started on the homework. It's due, I think, next Tuesday. Any questions, let me know. Um, Trevor Moss, I need to see you.